Weird sciencey facts that boggle my mind. Everybody who hates the way I say nuclear, you better buckle up, because this is gonna be a rough one for you. Arguably mankind's biggest scientific achievement came from making the tiniest particles of matter even tinier. Splitting the atom. Nuclear fission creates massive amounts of energy from the smallest amount of matter. And while it was originally developed in a race to control alt delete Nazis, and was ultimately successful in creating the world's most powerful weapons that we use to etch a sketch a race a couple Japanese cities. But nuclear fission ended up having far-reaching implications and applications that went well beyond apocalyptic weapons. Nuclear energy can allow the biggest seafaring vessels in the world to traverse the planet for over a decade without refueling. Fission-powered power plants provide reliable carbon-free energy to millions of homes. Its power can be used as an efficient and effective source to desalinate seawater, providing safe, clean water for drinking and irrigation in places afflicted by drought. They can provide clean, efficient heat for refining metals, or power for space exploration. Nuclear energy is even indispensable in agriculture and medicine as well. And as the world begins to warm quicker and quicker, as our demands for energy are met with practices that release methane and carbon into our atmosphere, wars are fought over controls of oil reserves and access to clean water, countless preventable fatalities are caused every year because of lack of access to reliable power, and turbulent energy markets create global economic instability and insecurity. Nuclear fission seemed for a time like we had this guy not sure, the man who was gonna fix all our problems. But unfortunately, the solution wasn't quite as simple as using toilet water to irrigate our fields, because the technology has its fair share of issues. First, the radioactive waste it produces is dangerous. It remains dangerous for centuries and is difficult to store. The materials and processes used and needed to create peacetime energy can also be used to create world-ending bombs. And despite nuclear power's impeccable safety record as compared to any other source of energy generation, a few high high-profile mishaps and accidents have shaken public confidence in the technology. As a result, it has not been allowed to fulfill the promises of the nuclear era we were once hoping for. But splitting heavy atoms apart, fission, is not the only way to produce nuclear energy. You can also create energy with nuclear fusion by fusing light atoms together like hydrogen. In fact, the biggest nuclear reactor in our solar system is right there, our sun and its immense energy is created through the process of fusion. In fact, fusion is magnitudes more powerful than fission, and unlike the radioactive plutonium and uranium that requires refining that's needed for fission, hydrogen is one of the most safe, stable, and abundant resources in the world. What's more is fusion reactions have almost no harmful waste. Fusion has the potential to supply the entire world with cheap, clean, carbon-free energy. But it turns out creating our own sun here on Earth isn't quite as easy as you might think. Temperatures in Inside a fusion reactor can reach over 180 million degrees, which is 10 times hotter than the center of the sun. Now, I don't know if jet fuel can melt steel beams, but a fusion reaction can vaporize them. So the reaction literally needs to be suspended in mid-air. It can't touch the walls of the reactor or just melt right through them. Trying to do a levitation magic trick with a 180 million degree ball of plasma makes the reaction a little unstable. But as it turns out, scientists being motivated by achieving the greatest accomplishment in human history, they figured out how to make that particular magic trick pretty much a reality. But as you may guess, when it comes to nuclear physics, there's a lot more obstacles, more than my feeble mind can understand. But the biggest obstacle by far has just been getting the damn thing started. Like an old Farmall diesel on a Minnesota midwinter morning, you gotta warm it up a whole hell of a lot to get the damn thing running. In this case, around 180 million degrees. And unfortunately, when you're trying to jumpstart the sun, hooking jumper cables up to your Duramax doesn't quite do the trick. You gotta get a little more Dr. Evil with it and get some frickin' sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their frickin' heads. Minus the sharks. They shoot the capsule with a super powerful laser to get the reaction jump started, and it works. Kind of. Problem is, it takes immense amounts of power to charge this laser up and fire it. Unfortunately, it's always been quite a bit more power than anything we've gotten out of the fusion reactions that's resulted. It's not a very good power source if it takes more energy to run than you can get out of it. But in December, for the first time, that changed. And lasers putting out two megajoules of energy created a fusion reaction of three megajoules. This is a huge win in fusion research, but unfortunately it is not yet total victory. Because despite the lasers putting out two megajoules and getting out three, the lasers aren't very efficient and it took magnitudes more energy to power up those lasers and cool them and process and cool the supercomputers that run them. So now we know we can create net positive energy at the site of a fusion reaction. The lasers need to get a lot more efficient before we can truly create net positive.
positive energy through fusion. And that, coupled with the need for technological advancements and containment of the reactions, and figuring out how we're going to transform that power into usable energy, means our fusion fuel source will likely remain a fantasy for decades into the future. And while one day the world will likely harness the greatest energy source imaginable, climate change and energy stability still need to be addressed now with technology we have today. But the fact that we have taken one giant step forward towards ushering in an era of unlimited clean energy in possibly our lifetime, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.